Today I'm going to be sharing with you a problem which I actually don't normally share on YouTube. I have my own bank of problems that I use with my students who are looking to prepare for these admissions tests for Oxford and Cambridge Maths. So this is a problem that I use for students who are looking to prepare for the TMUA. But I thought I'd share it with you guys as a little treat. We want to know how many real solutions does x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus 80, sorry, minus 8x plus 16 equals 0 have? This is a problem which is designed to replicate what you know, a classic TMUA style problem could be. And in fact, what I'm going to be doing is showing you two different ways of approaching this problem. But I do encourage you to pause the video now and give this problem a go for yourself. Let's dive in. We have seen this many, many times before. If you are a long time viewer of the channel, whenever you see how many as the start of a question, when it's how many real solutions or what is the number of real solutions where they're asking you for the quantity of solutions as opposed to what is the solution to this equation or what are the solutions. So they don't actually care what the explicit numbers are that solve this. We just want to know how many of them are there. The trick there is to sketch. So we want to sketch this graph here uh, or the graph of y equals this thing here. And basically then we're just going to count the number of times crosses the x-axis. Sounds simple. I guess the only thing is this is a quartic. How on earth do we sketch a quartic? Now, it's a positive quartic, so it could look like this, could look like this. That's probably the most like, likely example. Could look something like this, where it kind of has a point of inflection there. Lots of things it could look like. How do we work out what exactly it looks like? Well, we're going to focus on the turning points of this guy. So if I call this f of x, so f of x is going to be x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus 8x plus 16. Let's take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So we get 4x cubed minus 20x minus 8. And we're going to set it equal to 0 because we're looking for the turning point. So this is at the turning point. Um, so if I divide by 4, x cubed minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. And now we get a cubic, ugh, cubic. So there's no cubic formula. Well, there is, but you don't need to know what it is um, for the TMUA. Um, also, it's a pain to use. Um, how do we approach solving this cubic? Well, factor theorem is quite useful. So we can start by kind of chucking in numbers here. So you might chuck in x is 0, x is 1, x is minus 1, and so on. And this works. Eventually, you're going to get a solution, a nice solution. There is an integer solution to this. But whilst I'm here, I might, might as well mention that we can use the integer root theorem to help us or the rational root theorem to help us because everything here, all the coefficients are integers. Um, the integer root theorem says that if there is an integer solution to this cubic equation here, it must be a factor of minus two. So if there is an integer that solves this equation, it must be a factor of minus two. And that leaves us with plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So there's no point here me testing x equals 3, it won't work, or x equals 4, or x equals minus 3, or anything like this. I just need to test these numbers, and if you test all of these numbers, you can plug in minus 2 and see that this cubic equals 0. And so I get minus 2 cubed, and minus 5 times minus 2, minus 2 equals 0, and this just works. And so by the factor theorem, I know that x plus 2 is a factor of this cubic. Okay, so x plus 2 is a factor of this. And now you can either do long division or division by inspection. I know that it's going to have an x squared at the front and a minus one at the end to match these terms here. And I need to make 5x in the middle. So it's currently I've got minus x. So I need to take away another 4x in order for this to kind of give me the minus 5x. So I need a minus 4x term there, like so. Um, oh, actually, hold on a second. That's not quite right. Um, what's gone wrong here? Um, sorry, not a minus 4x, a minus 2x term, sorry, because minus 2x times the 2 there gives us the minus 4x, sorry. Um, great, so this equals 0. Awesome. So let's just recap what we've done so far. We have this weird quartic that we started with, and we took its derivative with the goal being to try and find the turning points of this quartic, because we know we want to sketch this. And we've got this here. So we know one solution is minus 2. And if you solve this quadratic here, it's not particularly nice. Uh, it's not like integer solutions. We get uh, 1 plus or minus root, oh, sorry, root 2. Uh, no, 1 plus or minus root 2 are the solutions here. So x is either uh, minus 2 or it's 1 plus or minus root 2. And this means that our quartic has three turning points, which is, I guess, the nicest type of quartic 
Um, well, depends on what you're defining nice to be, but it means it's going to look something like this, broadly speaking. So like a W shape, it doesn't have to be symmetric at all. So I've deliberately drawn it a bit uh, off center. So something like this. And I know that the X coordinate of this first turning point is going to be minus two. So this is going to have coordinates minus two something because minus two is the smallest of these three numbers. Then one minus root two is going to be the middle one. So it's going to be one minus root two something. And then this guy here will be one plus root two comma something like so. Now, one plus root two, one minus root two, they're a bit annoying, those numbers, because they've got thirds in. So I'm going to deal with minus two first and work out what this y value is. So just subbing this back into f. So f of minus two, minus two to the four, minus 10 times minus two oops, squared, minus eight times minus two plus 16. And minus two to the four, that's 16. That's minus 40. That's plus 16. That's plus 16. So it's 48 minus 40, which is eight. So the y value here is eight. This is pretty cool. Let me change the color of my pen here. Now, we worked out that that has y coordinate eight. So actually, I don't actually care what the y coordinate of this is. I know that this number here is going to be bigger than eight. I know that there's a few possible cases here. Either my x-axis goes like somewhere in between these two, in which case I've got three roots, or my x-axis kind of is a tangent to this turning point, so something like that, roughly, in which case I've got only one root. Sorry, I tell a lie. If it's there, it's only two roots, those guys. If it's here, then there's only one root there. And if my x-axis is somewhere down here, well, then I had no real roots. So what I need to do here is essentially work out the y value here. And this is a little bit annoying to do because I've got one plus root two, but it's not impossible. You just use the binomial ex uh, expansion. And if you're very competent with it, you can do that relatively quickly. So if I do f of one plus root two uh, and you sub it into here, so you get one plus root two to the four minus 10 times one plus root two squared minus eight times one plus root two plus 16. If you end up expanding and evaluating, you just use the binomial theorem on those guys. Uh, and it's just going to be an integer plus an integer root 2, it turns out to be minus 5 minus 16 root 2, if I remember correctly. But the crucial part being that guy there is clearly oops, negative. Um, so this number here is going to be negative. And so that tells me that that turning point there is below my x-axis. So my x-axis is going to be somewhere there because this has positive y value, but this guy has negative y value. And so therefore, I only have two real solutions like so. So this quartic, or the answer to this question is two. How many real solutions does this quartic have? Answer is two. Um, yeah, this is kind of a standard way to approach this is by considering a sketch. That's how they want you to generally approach these problems in TMUA. There is technically a quartic formula, but please do not try and memorize that formula. Uh, I, just looking at it gives me nightmares, let alone even trying to memorize it. And plus, even if you did memorize it without a calculator, it's probably not going to be that useful because you're going to have some really weird surds in there, which unless you're a mathematical calculator, human calculator, you probably are going to struggle to determine anything with that. OK, so that's one solution. But as promised, I will show you another solution, which is kind of similar, um, but it's uh, based on some quite a cool observation about this quartic. So let me just uh, scroll down and give myself some more space here. So let me rewrite this quartic. So you've got x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Like, so let me just check that's right. Yeah, OK. And we're trying to find the number of real solutions to this. Now, we know, certainly if you're doing this in the TMUA, you should know what the spec is, like what's on the specification. And it's just first year of A-level single maths, basically, with a couple of other things in there. And in first year A-level single math, they don't really talk about quartics at all. In fact, one of the only times it's mentioned is when you are solving a quartic by it being a hidden quadratic. What do I mean by that? When, when it's something like x to the 4 plus you know, 8x squared plus 12, if I do a substitution t equals x squared, then this thing just becomes t squared plus 8t plus 12. And then I can, it's a quadratic now in t. 
The issue is here, if we do that with this, well, this isn't a hidden quadratic because of this pesky 8x term. If that wasn't there, then this would be quite a nice hidden quadratic because all the powers of x are even, so I could replace x squared with t, for example. But actually, if we just kind of cross our fingers and hope that this works, if I just scribble out the 8x, but just bear with me, trust me, trust me for a second, if we scribble out that 8x, we get x to the 4 minus 10x squared plus 16. And this factorizes super nicely. This is just x squared minus 2, x squared minus 8. But then we can use the difference of two squares again on this and say that this is x plus root 2, x minus root 2. And then this is x plus root 8, x minus root 8, which is just x plus 2 root 2, x minus 2 root 2. But of course, this is all completely ignoring the 8x. But what if I brought the 8x over to this side and made that this is equal to 8x, like so? Well, what benefit is this? Well, we're still going to make that approach of drawing a sketch. But now I can draw this left-hand side relatively easily because it's a quartic. It has four real roots. And very nicely, these four real roots are kind of symmetrically distributed, if you like. Um, so let's try and sketch this. It's a positive quartic on the left side. It's got roots at root 2, 2 root 2, minus root 2, and minus 2 root 2, like so. I'll also sketch this in a different color. So it's going to be a W shape. It's going to be symmetric around the y-axis because it's an even function. Not too difficult to check that. And it's going to look something like this. So that's my left-hand side, y equals this quartic. And if I also draw y equals 8x in, that's going to be a straight line. Um, so it's going to look something like this, maybe. Well, it could look like that. But it also could look like this. So if it, if, I, if it looks something like this, I have one point of intersection here. And in fact, these guys will eventually kind of catch up to each other. Because remember, this guy's a quartic. This guy's only linear. So the quartic will eventually outgrow the linear function. So there will be another point of intersection somewhere up here or very far off the picture, but there will be some other point of intersection. So maybe it's easier if I draw that, that line like this. So I've got a point of intersection there and there. So that's one possibility, but you can see also if this atex is kind of a bit more shallow, it could potentially give me solutions over here. Now, of course, we know from the first method that there are only two solutions, but let's pretend we don't know that. How do I know that this can't possibly look like this? Well. What I can do is do something similar to before and find this turning point over here. And this turning point, we can work out just by using um, calculus on uh, this. Uh, where has it gone? Uh, x to the 4 minus 10x squared plus 16. So if I just call that g of x is x to the 4 minus 10x squared plus 16. If I differentiate this. I get 4x cubed minus 20x, and I want to find this turning point here. So I'm going to set this equal to 0, so I get x cubed minus 5x equals 0. So I get x times x plus root 5, x minus root 5 equals 0. And so therefore, I can determine that this coordinate of this turning point is at minus root 5, because it's clearly the negative solution here. And minus root 5 definitely is between minus root 2 and 2 root 2. And then all I need to do is essentially work out this y value. That's not too difficult to do. So g of minus root 5 is just minus root 5 to the 4, minus 10 times minus root 5 squared, plus 16. And that's going to give me 25. Um, so that's going to give me 5, so minus 50, plus 16. So that's minus 9. So this y value here is minus 9. But that's when I get to minus, so that, that so the coordinates of this point here is minus 5, mi, sorry, minus root 5, minus 9. That's a local minimum. But if I draw y equals 8x, well, by the time that x is minus root 5, x is going to be, sorry, y is going to be minus 8 root 5, which is going to be roughly minus 16, minus 17, because obviously root 5 is roughly 2. So 8x is going to be roughly minus 16. And so it's going to be much further down. And so my line is going to look something like this. And so it's very clear to see that it's not going to have any like intersections down here. And so we're only going to have one intersection here and then one intersection up here. 
And so therefore, there's only two solutions to our equation. So that's the second way that we can solve this problem. Um, both ways are pretty cool. Uh, obviously, the second one, maybe you need to make a nice observation of bringing that 8x to the right hand side. How obvious that is, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess that kind of comes from experience having solved lots of these types of problems before. But if you did enjoy these methods and found them quite interesting and also are struggling with these types of problems and knowing that you want to do the TMUA or the MAT or just make it in general a mathematics application to Oxbridge, do get in touch. So uh, my link is in the description below to my website. You can uh, leave a comment in the form at the bottom. Um, but yeah, currently I'm looking to take on students who are looking to study at Oxford and Cambridge. And one of the things I'm quite proud of is my success rate. So over 80% of my students end up receiving offers. So if you are someone who genuinely wants to make a good application to these universities with a very strong chance of getting an offer, do get in touch. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.